Hey everybody, welcome back to Dead Car Rescue. There's a car in this metal barn I've never seen before. I've heard about it over the years, but it's been in this barn, I'm gonna say 20 years. But let's go in and look at it. I'd say we got what, a 68? What year is it? 69. 69. Look at it. Sucker's got flip up headlight. I didn't know it was a two door hard top. Yeah. He said LTD. Mr. He said, Mr. He said, he told me that he was first day. That's what he's got. 42,000 original miles. 42. 42. Golly, 42,000 miles. This is a nice car. I don't think you got a hood pop in here. You don't? On this year. Maybe under the bumper there. I've had it up before, but God has been here. Been a hundred years. Uh, it's gonna need some work. Yeah, it needs some work. The breather stuff's in the trunk. A I told him 20 years ago, I was trapped. It's not a different car to set up. No, it ain't. 1986. How long has it been here, Clayton? 20 years? 22. 22 years, okay. Been here a long damn time. It's been started for 22 years. Well, I used to start it moving around. See, but the, tire, the back tires is up. Front ones is gone, ain't they? Oh, they ain't. They ain't. Yeah, they ain't worth a nickel. I've seen ugly ones I can air up. Have, have you tried to air it? No, you ain't gonna air them up there big hole in them. Well, they look like it. Look at that hole. They look like, but it got a bladder on the inside. Look at that. Okay. Might have a tube in it. Yeah, it could have. That's a beautiful car. Ain't no, I don't see any rust anywhere on it. Uh, all the rust it is, right? Right here. See that? But that's surface right now. And there was a bubble. I seen a bubble in the top somewhere. I don't remember where I seen it at. Right, right here. here. Right. See this? Yeah. See oh, right yeah. There, that's rust coming under there. Okay. But if I was him, I wouldn't touch that. Oh, I would do. If he's going to keep it, because there ain't many people who put a vinyl on top of a car anymore. I know. All right, let's see if we can see the miles on this. Fifty-two thousand eight seventy-six. Interior is perfect. I ain't bumping my. Man, good grief! Interior was nice. Now. Oh, it still is. It just needs to be cleaned up. It, it does.
from the first looks. Is that not cool? Folks, this is like a time capsule. It's a 390 car. There you can see the tires on it. Polyester tires kind of give up the ghost about, I don't know, 20 years ago. And uh, there is some surface rust right along in here. And by the way, when's the last time you've seen an antenna on a factory car come out with an antenna on a fender? I've never seen one on a driver's fender. I've seen it on the passenger's fender. So if you got any information about that, uh, add, add it in your comments. Let's look at the outside of it here. This is a LTD. It's got a lot of chrome on it. And uh, that's paper. It's had some stuff, boxes and stuff on it, sitting on it. You can see where they took them off. It's been sitting since 2000. And there's not a dent on it anywhere. Not a dent. It's got some, uh, I figure the back seat looks okay, but until I get that off over there, I don't know. Headliner's in perfect shape. Back seat's good, and that's that kind of silky, silky feeling stuff. And let's see here. Lead substitute. There's four, four bottles of STP lead substitute. And there's the breather. Now they did move this car around for a while inside that building when they wanted to bring something in or something like that. They did move it. And finally, after a while, the battery went down. It quit starting. And uh, I just kind of let it sit there. But that's how you open the doors. And can you see this design? That looked like the inside of a coffin. That's what I think it looks like. And oh yeah, plenty of room. Look here. Look here how, how much room we've got. And there is a crack in the dash. That's okay, that's okay. Hmm, it even smells good in here. It doesn't smell bad. Although we have some mold on the stern wheel and some on the key holder there. Let's take those keys out, by the way. Let's look in the glove compartment, see what it says. Ooh, it says there's rats living in there. I'm not gonna dig that out right now. But we will in just a second. Why do rats like glove compartments? I don't know. But they do. The floors. I think it looks good underneath. I haven't even been underneath it. But we're going to take a look real quick. How about it? Let's see if we can get our old butt down here on the ground and look under this thing. This one by. Okay, now, I do notice something. All right, look at that transmission. There is no weight hanging down from those three holes. Um, I was always told they, they had to have those weights to make the, uh, the engine smooth and all that. But uh, I'm wrong, I guess. And that floor pan over there, I can see better than you, can, you guys can. They look perfect. No dents or or nothing. This old lady, she she probably never got on the gravel road. Okay, you can see a little bit more of the rust popping through underneath that vinyl top there. It probably, the way I'm looking at it, um, the guy that owns this car is a friend of ours, and uh, he wants us to fix it. He wants us to get it running like it was when it was new. Exhaust, engine, whatever it needs. 
it's up to us to get it and put it on. And my brother Flash is gonna be helping me with this. He's retired and he don't have anything to do, so. The battery's not even bolted down either. They might have put that battery on there just to get it around. We're gonna get it running. I don't know if the motor's locked up, I don't know. But we're gonna do our best and we'll let you see everything we do to it. It's got a cigarette lighter and an ashtray somewhere. I don't, oh, right there it is. Let's see if Grandma smoked. Ooh, Grandma smoked. Grandma may not have smoked, but somebody did smoke. That's not, that's not cigarette ashes. That's rat turds. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Grandma, I mean, I didn't mean to say that you smoked. 52,876 miles. And that, look, the radio's over here. Now, see that? Okay, this is to keep from your wife changing the channels while you're driving. Like in 69, if you was listening to Creedence Clearwater Revival, come on the radio. Your wife said, no, no, I want to listen to Perry Como. So sorry, babe, I'm driving. We're going to be listening to Creedence. As soon as that radio fades back in from Chicago, WLS. Because it did at night. That WLS, I don't know, was 890, or think it was. Somewhere along in there, 890. You could pick up WLS in Chicago here in Arkansas. And I, it would play like Cheech and Chong, uh, all the good hits and the, all the disc jockeys were just so cool. And uh, then it would fade out again and fade back in and fade out. So that's what you had to listen to back a long time ago. That's a fan, a cigarette lighter. Looky there, grandma didn't even smoke a cigarette. And uh, you could buy these cars used. A used car like this at a car lot and say, this is 69, I wanna say 79. You could get them for like $1,200, $1,500. See what's in the trunk. Before we open this trunk, I bet you there's a spare tire, a jack, and a lug wrench, and maybe a spare tire cover. Maybe not on these cars, but it's probably got carpet, and uh, it's got panels on the sides, each side that's carpeted. Let's see. There's a spare tire. There's the jack. That's the jack bottom. There's the jack. Got a jack right there. And the lug wrench. And a couple of wrenches. Polyester tire. <coughs> it's got air in it or either it's hard as a rock. That's cool, isn't it? They don't make cars like they used to, folks. And listen, okay. I know you've been wanting to see what's in the rat nest. Let's see if there's a rat in there. Gonna put your gloves on, Steve? Nah. Man don't need gloves. You could go watch Fair and Young, Johnny Duncan, Johnny Paycheck, The Kindles, Danny Davis and the Nashville Brass, Tom T. Hall, Porter Wagner, Ronnie Millsap, Jerry Lee Lewis. That's in Hot Springs, Arkansas. There's the Ford Owner's Manual.
There's matches from Chipwood Farm Equipment, Misco Implement Company, Osceola, Arkansas. Get a head start on weed control, by the way. Put Treflan on it. That ought to kill just about anything. You can get, hey, we're gonna get a free pizza. Look at that, it looks good, don't it? I'm hungry anyway. Bring this card in to Ken's Pizza nearest you. Buy one pizza and get the other second free. That's what I figured. They ain't gonna give you nothing. What's wrong with that other pizza? One of them probably bad, I don't know. Oh, good your passenger tires. Okay, as you can see, we've got her washed down now. We uh, used the pressure washer with cold water, just kind of getting some of this crud off of it so we can work on it. I did wash under the hood. Uh, we're gonna do a better wash job once we get the thing running. And uh, I'm gonna clean it up inside, outside. Grandma will be proud of it if she was still here. Okay, I found out the best way to get these plug wires off. If they're stuck on there, you'll break the plug wire, but we're gonna replace them anyway, but I'm just gonna pull them off like this. Pull off real easy. It's got a mark here, one, two, three, and four on this little plug wire holder. And that's where we're gonna put them back. See what I mean? Okay. This Ford has those old big plugs. Uh, 13 16 socket. Fits them. They changed that to the smaller plug where a 5 8 socket fits it. I don't know when they did that, but I think all the Fords had that later on in years. But all the old Fords had those big old plugs. And look at this. Oh, number two looks just as good as number one. So, now that one's got some rust on it. So that plug right there tells me that I need to squirt something down in the cylinders. I knew that was coming. I just didn't know how soon or what, what plug I was gonna pull out that's gonna have some rust on it. But that, it means the valve was open. Got some moisture down in there. In this car, does have um, points in it. It's not electronic ignition in 69, or this one wasn't. I don't know if 
might come in with that on 1970 or 71, I'm not sure. All the plugs look good except that third one back. And it could have a little rust in the cylinder. But we're gonna squirt some slick juice down in there and uh, let it set. While we're up here, let's check the oil. I haven't checked the oil yet. Okay. You can see that. It's, it looks clean. I can see S-A-F-E. It looks full too. Now, I'm not gonna taste this. I'll leave that to uh, Derek of Vice Grip Garage. He likes the taste of oil. I don't. But if he was here right now, I'd say, taste this and tell me if it's got viscosity. And uh, what do you think? But he's not here. I wonder what Derek is doing today. I bet he's working on some old car like this something. I know he's working on something. Anyway, let's go to the other side. There you go. That don't look too bad. It's a little bit sooty, but I like that. Sooty is better than rusty. You know, squeaky wheel gets the grease. That one looks decent. So, Okay, got all the plugs out of it. I'm gonna put some loose juice in it and uh, let them soak for a while. Turn that key on. Turn that key on, see if you got any uh, fire to the coil. Okay, you, the, the coil's working. The coil's got fire to it. Put it neutral. Now put it in park. All right. Okay, it'll turn. All right, now we get, are we getting fire to the plug? Let's try a plug. Plug wire. I'll ground that out somewhere or whatever. Ground. All right. No, because the points is probably open. Uh, Yeah. Right, Steve, now. It's got antifreeze in it, by the way. And it's got um, oil in it. Steve, go in there and turn the ignition on. Ignition is on. Okay. Yeah, turn your motor over. Oh. Uh, these points need to be tucked out. Okay. I'm going to take the points out. Go ahead and turn your switch off. It's off. I'm going to put a wire on here and take that contact loose wheel. All right, folks, we'll be back after a while. We're going to go make a parts run.
in there? Yep. Go boat, hang on. Hang on, hang on, do nothing yet. Ain't been started. It ain't been started in 23 years. We're fixing to try to start it now. I got the gas. Go ahead. That's a promise. We got gas. Folks, huh? we're using Rotella T4 15W40 motor oil. Now this is supposed to have all the goodies in it, all the vitamins and minerals that a motor needs. And by the way, it's it's reasonable price too. Mm -hmm. That's a quart. The old school way, just guessing. There should be five quarts of oil in this car. By the way, my my new Ram truck yeah. it holds seven quarts. Seven quarts.
that works. Yep. It works. Alright. It works. It's as good as new. It still works. Put that up in your stash. Okay. I didn't think it had a head on There's the old one. You ever seen that happen? It's a shock it come off of. These were the shocks that was on it when it come out of the factory. But the stem's still in there and it's still hooked up to the nut. So we might have to just cut that out. So we'll see. Okay, it's time to bring out the big guns because the nut will not come off and I can't get it off. I've tried. So, there's no help in that nut. You can see if we can do this without burning the house down or the shop down. Let's see. There we go, it ought to be done. That got it. I'm gonna show you how to pack bearings cause I gotta get these uh, hubs back on. And I got the bearings cleaned up. I just wiped them off with an old grease rag. That's good enough in Arkansas. Now, what you do is you take this grease. Take you a gob of it. A gob of grease. And you mash it right there in your hand like that right there. Now I got a gob of grease in my hand. I'm going to take a bearing. I'm going to just do a couple for you. And I got this bearing here. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna start mashing it. You see that gr grease start coming out already? It'll push the old grease out. You just mash it down in there. It goes in between this little ridge right here. It goes up around the bearings and comes out the top. And then you flip it over. You can see the backside of that. Flip it over and you do the same thing. And you're just, really, you're just packing that grease down in there. And it looks like it is packed in there. So there you go. And then you save this grease for later. That's how you pack a bearing if you don't have one of those fancy tools that you buy to pack bearings. All right, Steve, I need a, I need a break shoe. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. 
a lot of brakes to put them down in there, but this model four here don't do that. See that pad? It goes out toward the, put this pad on the back side toward the motor. Yeah, right. All right, we're going to do it the right way. Let's, I was about to correct you. Let's turn it toward the, the drum. Yeah, some people do put them on where the brake pad is facing the engine. I took them apart before and somebody the put them on there and they said, hey, it's got brand new brake shoes on it. That's because they ain't never been used. These little things right here, they help hold the brake pad in. The brake pad keeps it from rattling. And uh, these need to be put back on there. One there, one there. There we go, we got the brakes done on the front. All we need is the hose, really. Ugh. That's the hose, these things are 50 something years old. Still got fluid coming out, but that don't mean they're good. Because, like I say, when you mash the brakes, fluid will come out some, on some of them. But that hole inside the brake line and the hose part of it, that hole gets stopped up like a like an artery in your arm. If you've been eating a lot of popcorn and a lot of butter, it closes it up. And um, when you mash the brake pedal, it's got pressure that mashes brake fluid down this line into the brake caliper, and then it closes the caliper and stops you. And when you let off the brake, it releases the pressure but if it's, if it's under pressure and you can't get any uh, fluid back through the line, it's gonna hold pressure on this, this brake caliper and it's not gonna release. And your brakes are gonna get hot and they're gonna start smoking and uh, that's not good. Then next thing you know, you'll be putting new brake pads back on it after you put new hoses on it because you'll have to have new hoses on it that is your problem in the first place. Meanwhile, at Buckeye Garage, bitch bleeding a master cylinder. You're getting the air out of the master cylinder, folks, is what this is doing. And it's on a bench, it's in a vise. Before you put it on the car, when you stop seeing bubbles, seeing bubbles in the back. Yep. When you stop seeing bubbles, that means the air is all gone and there's nothing but fluid coming out. Get fluid coming out? Yep. See it coming? Yep. See, I don't feel this up twice. You get lost, no fluid. All this fluid going down in this, there's a, there's a piston in there. There's a piston in there. All this fluid going in that piston. Now it ain't gonna come out now because I got this tightened up. Okay. This is just like pumping your brakes. Pump them up. Them air bubble? Yep. See it fluid going down? Yep. All right, now I'm gonna push, I'm pushing down on the brakes. Okay. Hold that in that cup. Okay. okay. You're gonna loosen the line, I loosen yeah. it. Come out. All right, tighten that back up. Now, if you had your foot on there, you could blow these little rubber plugs out here, but you're not gonna blow them out in your hand. See, I got pressure right now. There's pressure. You're putting brake pressure on your brakes. Okay. You 
and it's down to the floor. Okay. All right, tighten it up. Pump it back up again. I got a good pedal right there. See? Okay. But when you got your foot on a back paddle and you mash it down, you can put a whole lot more pressure on it than you can with your hand. Yeah. Because it's got that stroke. You got resistance there. I think it's bled. I ain't seen no more air bubbles. That's how you bench bleed a master cylinder, folks. I'll be honest with you, I've never done that before. I've always just put it on the car, put fluid in it, start pumping like, have your wife pumping a brake pedal or something, and bleeding it out there where it goes to the brake caliper or the brake uh, cylinder. It's, I learned something today too, it's 68 years old, so. All right, I've been working on it all day. Flash isn't here today. He worked on it all day yesterday, and I helped him, but uh, my back was bad. Had a back problem, but uh, it's better today, and uh, Flash isn't here, but I'm working on it. Here's what's going on. We put the old tires and wheels back on it. The guy that owns it bought five brand new radial tires to go on these wheels. We're gonna change those as soon as they come in. He ordered them. He has a tire machine, the balance machine. And uh, also the muffler from the uh, Y pipe back uh, is bad. We're gonna get that changed later. We couldn't do it this week. I've gotta leave out uh, Saturday and uh, go to Pennsylvania again. Also the brake lines. The rubber hoses on the brakes, all of them were bad. I knew they would be. They've been setting up 25 years, or 23, 22 years. They've all collapsed inside. A little bit of fluid come out, but that wasn't good enough. So we ordered new ones, and we're waiting on them to come in. Got a new gas tank ordered. There's the old one. It was just rotten and a sending unit and it will be here probably next week when i get back from pennsylvania and we'll finish this thing up and let him have it back okay everyone there you go now we've got a custom fuel tank put on it until we can get one got it ordered it ought to be in in about a week or so they say had to get one for a Mercury Marquee, which is it's basically the same car. This uh, LTD is hard to find parts for, but if you say Mercury Marquee, 69 Marquee, they seem to pull up a lot, a lot easier. And I, I've had to order several parts for them for that. So, um, okay, well, this is what we got done. Got the engine running good. I have rebuilt the carburetor in a way. I didn't have a kit, but I got a uh, new diaphragm for the carburetor and a new power valve. Cleaned it out real good, blowed the jets out and all that. Stuck it back on there. This uh, truck talk carburetor from China, don't buy one. That one had mosquitoes in it. It had sand, it had pieces of rubber all, all in it. I tried to blow it all out and I'm sure there's some still in there. This is a piece of junk. You can't even adjust the float. You can adjust it, but it's really hard. It's just like a, it's cross-threaded. Okay, so don't ever buy one of these truck talk Chinese cheap carburetors. I'm gonna say all of them have probably got mosquitoes and and uh, junk in them. So, forget about them. Oh, say hello to my new dog. That is uh, my new dog, Shorty. It's a stray, it just came up, and it's my shop dog now.
You know, this is not a professional wax job. I know there's a lot of guys out there that does this for a living. They're probably looking at me and saying, he's using turtle wax. Well, yeah, because I got two cans of it. And uh, I'm not gonna buy the expensive stuff for these old cars. Uh, the owner of this car probably wouldn't even say anything if I didn't wax it, what I'm doing now. He probably would say, okay, that's good enough. Looks good. Okay, folks, there she is. We've done just about everything we could do to it, except for put a heater core in it, a gas tank in it, new tires on it, and exhaust system. Other than that, we're finished. Cleaned her up last night, this morning a little bit, so. She's running good. Don't have any problems with the, with the engine at all. But, uh, let's take her for a drive, how about it? Okay. I'll let you take a look at the cleaning I've done. Clean the floors, the carpets, the doors, all the windows the best I could. It doesn't look bad. It still could use some uh, professional detailer to uh, finish it up. Electric windows don't work in them anymore. Oh yeah, I forgot. All right, we got a two gallon jug on the front. I think we got about a gallon and a half left. So we got enough for a test drive. We'll see how it goes here. Oh, she drives, I steers like a, like a dream. Oh, also we got to put the rubber brake lines on the front and that that'll do it can't go too fast because the rubber will come off the tires I can hear it slapping right now can you hear that will not do a burnout that's for sure I could I could cremate that tire couldn't I the old speedometer works the radio was working but it quit Polyester tires, I don't know if uh, if radials will make this thing drive any better. I'm not gonna say it will. But uh, you know, the tires that's on it are just shot, so I'm not gonna say anything about the way it drives. It's, it should be pretty good underneath the front end there, so. I like the floating feel of a, of a big car back from back in the day. Make it back to the house. Hey, can y'all tell me how to get to the Begley Wiggly? Hey, that thing got a heavy in it. Buddy, that thing got a hemi. On the road.
road again This old car is on the road again Well folks Looks like the, this is going to be the last drive for me I'm going to pull her in the shop Shut her down and go to Pennsylvania here in about another few hours. Appreciate you watching our video. Flash is going to come up and uh, this week and do a little bit more work to it while I'm gone. And if the gas tank comes in, he's going to stick that on and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, we enjoy working on these old cars. We hope you uh, have enjoyed this video. There's Shorty come to see me. Hey, Shorty. Okay, everybody, that's gonna do this video for this week on this uh, LTD, 1969 LTD. Appreciate y'all watching, and uh, thank you for subscribing and liking my channel. You don't know how much that means to me. I get up in the morning, I look to see if I've got any more subscribers. And you guys have did it and made me, made me smile many a morning. So uh, thank you for that. The old clock on the wall says it's time for us to get on out of here. So until next time, thank you from Dead Car Rescue. We'll see you next time. Bye.